Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to make the Demon Man from Team Fortress 2 in Unity. We're going to recreate the Sticky Grenade Launcher. It will fire sticky grenades that we can then manually trigger to explode. Let's get started. So, I have the scene here from the previous video with my Demon Man walking around and firing bouncing grenades. They bounce off walls and they explode when they hit enemies. We're going to replace that with sticky grenades that we can explode on command. Okay, so let's start off by creating a new prefab and name it PF Sticky Grenade. We're going to add first a sprite renderer and drag the sticky grenade sprite. Then we're going to add a rigid body 2D, leave it with no physics material, set mass to one, linear drag to three, angular to gravity to zero, since this is in top-down perspective. Add a circle collider 2D, set the radius to about 1.3. Yeah, about that, a little bit smaller than the actual sprite. And let's make it a trigger so it doesn't constantly fire events. Okay, so we have our basic prefab. Let's make the script. New C sharp script, name it Sticky Grenade. Now, in here, our code is going to be very similar to our bouncy grenade. So we're going to start off with a static creator, and we can actually just copy it from here. Copy it. Instead of getting a prefab for the bouncy grenade, let's say it's the prefab for the Sticky Grenade. We're also going to receive a spawn position, a target position, and using system, an action that will take a vector three that will be triggered on explode. This will be a sticky grenade, and rename all of this to sticky grenade. Okay, great. Now let's create our setup function. So go in here, grab all of this. Let's make our member variable, so an action, which will take a vector three, called on explode action. Okay, so in here we have our target position, the action that will trigger on explode. Uh, we have the move direction pointed towards the target position based on our transform position. And we got our move speed and we are setting the velocity. Now for our bounce grenades, we were just setting a basic move speed, but for our sticky grenades, we want to have a bit more control over where they're going. So we're going to set the move speed dependent on the distance to our target. So let's calculate float distance will be vector three dot distance between our transform dot position and the target position. And for our move speed, we're going to make it based on the distance and let's say multiply it by four. That makes it a very nice number. Now we want this to have a minimum and a maximum, so let's add a mathf.clamp, and we're going to clamp this value between, let's say, a minimum of 50 and a maximum of 250. Okay, so this way, if we click close to the character, it's only going to fire for a short distance. If we click very far away, it's going to fire with a high speed. And let's also add some angular velocity. So game object dot get component of type rigid body. And let's set the angular velocity to let's say minus a thousand F. So it's going to go in clockwise motion. Since this is a sticky grenade, we want it to stop moving when it actually hits something. We set up our circle collider as a trigger. So we're going to go into private void on trigger enter 2D. Now, when we actually hit something, we want to stop moving. So let's make a private void, stop moving. And in here, in order to stop it moving, we're simply going to destroy our physics objects. So Mojo's not get component, type, destroy the rigid body 2D and also the circle collider 2D. So this way, when the trigger is called, it won't destroy the physics objects and it will just stop in place. And as an effect, let's also add the simulated vertical movement from our bouncy grenade. So we can grab exactly the same code. Go in here and yeah. So just set the private int, bounce state, set the bounce state to zero and there you go. Okay, so this will just simulate vertical movement. So let's go into our game handler script and spawn a sticky grenade. 
I have here, the same thing from the last video. And in here on shoot, instead of spawning a bouncy grenade, I want to spawn a sticky grenade. It takes in the same parameters, but let's switch out the prefab. So the prefab for the sticky grenade and go up here. Now the prefab for the sticky grenade. Go back into our scene, add the reference to our sticky grenade prefab and on the prefab, let's add our sticky grenade script. Okay, good. Let's test it out and see if the grenade is being spawned. Okay, so as you can see, the sticky grenades are being correctly spawned. When they hit an enemy, they stop in their current position. If they hit a wall, they do the same thing. And we have the vertical simulated movement. We've got some angular rotation and works great. And as you can see, if I click very far away, it gets fired quite far. But if I click close to my character, it only fires a little bit. Okay, now we actually want it to explode. So let's do that. Back into our code here, we're going to trigger the explosion on a right mouse button click. So in here, let's set up a private void update. And if input dot get mouse button down of mouse button one, which is the right mouse button, when we hit that in here, we want to explode. So in order to explode all our grenades, we're going to leave that responsibility to the sticky grenade class. So we're going to go into the sticky grenade and create a new function that will trigger the explosion on every single grenade. So we're going to call it something like explode all grenades. Okay, so let's go and make that. Back in here, we're going to make a public static void explode all grenades. So in order to explode, we need a reference for all of our grenades. So let's make a private static a list of sticky grenade and call it sticky grenade list. And in here, when we create our grenade, we're going to, first of all, initialize the list. If it is null, equals a new list. And we're going to add our new sticky grenade. Now in our explode, we are simply going to do a for each, for each sticky grenade in our sticky grenade list. We're going to have a function called explode grenade. And then we're going to clear our list. Okay, let's make our explode grenade. Go down here, private void, explode grenade. In here, we want to destroy our game object and we want to trigger our function on explode action with our transform.position. Okay, so when we call this function, it's going to trigger explode grenade on every single grenade and then reset the list. And every time it's created, it gets added to the list and the list itself gets instantiated if it doesn't exist yet. Okay, great, everything's looking good. So let's go and test it out back into our scene and see if it's working exactly as intended. I have my wall there, I can fire at the wall and boom, it explodes. I can fire at the enemy, boom, there he goes. Okay, as you can see, we can now spawn and trigger, boom, and they all explode. Okay, so there you have it. We have created our sticky grenade based on our previous bouncy grenade. We made it stop moving when it hits something, set the move distance based on where we click, and make all grenades explode on command. On the next video, we're going to cover weapon reloading and limited ammo. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, see you next time.